Today, old Hoopty Doodle is excited to bring you two things. We got the speedometer mounted and we got turn signals on the front. All right, so we've got our bike here. We've got our headlight done, our headlight bucket done, our headlight guard done, headlight brackets are now done. We need to do the speedometer. And by the way, the last video, I had this upside down. <laughs> the, uh, the headlight is supposed to go with the big beams, the two little, the two high beam, low beam stuff is supposed to be on the top, not on the bottom. So I swapped that around and luckily the guard still works. So our next step is to put the uh, speedometer, get this guy in place. So I want it to sit right here, basically just like that. And these wires and stuff are gonna be exposed on the back. And my inspiration for this is I went to a motorcycle museum once and the race bikes had the same sort of thing. They don't have any stuff covering up all this. It's just exposed. So I'm okay with that. So we've got this bar here that we've mounted our bracket to. We've also got, but this bar comes off. This bar bolts onto the top yoke, top clamp thing here. So I can unbolt it here from the, from the underside of the clamp and then it can come out. My plan is to weld onto there. It's a real simple plan. The plan is basically we've got this guy from the stock unit. This is the part that holds the speedometer. I'm just gonna cut it off of here. Cut that sucker right off. And then weld it right on here. Bam, done. All right, so my first step is to isolate this speedometer portion of this bracket, which means removing it from the rest of the bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off right about there. All right, so a friend let us this cool bandsaw. I'm gonna try this thing out. I don't think I have quite the depth to get all the way through, but at least try it out a little bit, see how this works. Ta-da! All right, now with our little piece of bracket cut off, it's time. It's back over to the bike where it's time to try and fit this up to the bike itself, to this other bracket. So on this guy, you'll notice that there are little tabs sticking out on the bottom here. So I'm gonna cut those that part off because basically at this point we don't need that. I am gonna keep this little curve though on the bottom but in terms of fitting it up to this little curve here, this is like this is like curved round stock and this is flat stock. And so in order to make those fit up, uh, I'm gonna cut those little cut that little section off the bottom there and then I can sort of angle this however, tack it in, and then we'll take it over to the bench, take all this stuff off and fully weld it up. So our next step is to cut that off and then figure out where we want it on here. And at that point, I'm gonna go ahead and put all this together and then stick it on here and figure out where we want it, set it, and then tack it on. All right, I got this guy cut out. I've got it ground down to bare metal right here so I can weld it onto the other part of the bracket that's on the bike. And then on the bike, the bracket on the bike, I've also got that ground down to bare metal so I can weld to that. So our next step is to put this thing on there. All right, so now I wanna go ahead and put the speedometer back in the bracket, bolt that up and everything so we can get it on the bike appropriately. So, it all goes in through here, basically. Let's measure it up in reference to other spot on the bike. All right, so I'm just gonna try and make some measurements from different spots on the speedometer to like our top clamps here to make sure that it's about the same dimension, the same distance either way. That's a good spot right there. Now the challenge is just trying to get in there and tack it on. Because I got a pretty tight spot there. There we are, there's our speedometer. Ding 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 ding. 
it's all rubber mounted on there. All right, now I've got to go ahead and remove the bracket and everything from the bike here. So that means disconnecting our headlight bracket. And then this guy is connected down here with a couple bolts. I do have to say that this bike has a number of stainless steel hardware on it, which is pretty impressive. It's a good value, I think, for the money. This is not exactly an expensive bike to begin with. All right, so actually, here it is. Here's my tack that I got managed to get on there. This little guy over here, right there. So, gonna go ahead, try and weld up the rest of this with the TIG welder. See how that goes. All right, I've concluded my welding on this piece here, and I have got quite the weld on here. It is not very pretty and anything like that but i was actually starting to get a good feel for the puddle control at the very end there on the left where i was starting to i was starting to actually be able to do something and so i'm pretty happy with that it's a progress for me i watched a video the other day by this guy this old tony which he does a lot of welding uh, sort of tips and tricks stuff on his channel apparently and he had a video on puddle control and i'll link that in this video here because it was actually pretty useful and then also had a friend Stop by the other day and give me some tips as well as far as making sure my stick out on the torch here. I shortened that. I had it about half inch and I've got a little bit shorter than that now. It's closer to a quarter inch. And so that and maybe I upped my gas just a little bit because I was having erratic. Like I was having crazy problems with like erratic arc on this thing where it was the arc wasn't coming off the tip but it was like coming off the sides and just all over the place and so a lot of that was just making sure I have good torch control making sure that I'm not like doing this all over the place as I'm welding all right so now that we got the weld done on there this is more than enough weld for this bracket I'm going to go ahead and grind this stuff down and clean it up All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing back together. Get it mocked up and uh, we'll put it back on the bike. Let's see how it looks. It's on there. Roughly how it will look. <coughs> it's not bad, dude, it's not bad. I'm gonna throw up a picture of some examples of stuff from a museum where they had the race bikes set up like this. So I may have remembered this wrong. Looking at the pictures now, it seems obvious that the bikes are probably supposed to have fairings on them, but for whatever reason, they're not displayed with fairings. So maybe they run them this way? Eh, maybe. Anyways, these pictures are from the Barber Museum, which is in Birmingham, Alabama, and is one of the, I believe it's the largest motorcycle museum in the world. It's worth checking out. And I have a separate video on that. You wanna check that out as well. All right, so we still need turn signals on the front here. So I'm thinking about putting them right about there. This is what I'm using, it's these guys right here. These are little tiny ones. It's about as small as small the turn signals I could find basically for this. So I'm planning on putting them right up in here, about, about like that. And part of the reason is that there is a spot to put them there. We conveniently have a bolt right here that holds in the stanchion on the upper clamp, and so this one also has a bracket already on it for the brake lines running down through here. So basically the idea is flat piece of sheet metal coming down here, another little piece of metal that comes straight off in front here like that, and then with a hole drilled in it, and that's pretty much it. So in measuring this, I've got, I really just only wanna go down like an inch and a half. I just wanna come out maybe another inch three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch wide. So to get my three quarters of an inch width, I'm gonna use this guy. I'll set this to three quarters of an inch. Maybe a little bit past that because this stuff isn't exactly straight, perfect straight here. So let's see if I can clamp this down. So yeah, it's a little bit easier when I clamp it down. I don't need like another hand to do this. And just go along and gently mark it. And we'll try and cut that out in the bandsaw. 
All right, and the next I want one that's about an inch, so I mark that. And then an inch and a half. All right, and then you can see that my resulting pieces here, I've got the two inch long ones. They're not exactly the same size. They're different, and that's okay. My plan is I'm gonna drill a hole through them, and then I'm gonna shape them so that they are the same size. So I do that by drilling a hole, clamping them, bolting them together basically, and then shaping them as one thing, and then I unbolt them, and then you've got two pieces that are the same. All right, so there I've gone ahead and marked where the center is gonna be with using my uh, adjustable square again. Now I'm just gonna use a center punch to mark that so that the drill will have a place to start. All right, now I'll go ahead and tie these together, bolt them together, and then we can shape them. Bolt it together, and I'll go ahead and start shaping them now on the belt sander. All right, I've used similar techniques to make this guy, and this is the longer one, the inch and a half one, that will be used, that will attach to the actual bike. And I've rounded it to fit the curves on the top clamp of the bike. So this guy right here, you can see how it rounds on that corner there. So this matches that. So it should line up like that pretty, pretty nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this thing on here, clean all this stuff up for welding, bolt that on, and then we'll see about welding this one on here. All right, so with our metal all shined up, I'm gonna go ahead, install this top one here, the longer one, and tighten that down. And then this other one, I'm basically gonna hold it up here and then just tack it on there and then I can possibly bend it a little bit if I need to from there to get it straight, so it's straight out. All right, so let's go ahead and try putting this blinker on there and seeing how it sits. Not bad, not bad. So if we step back and look at it from here, I think that's a good position for the blinker. It kind of blends in. We'll go ahead and do the other side. And then we got blinkers. So I've got the little blinkers in here just sort of set in there so you can see what they look like. And then from a distance here, this is kind of what the bike looks like at this point in time with the blinkers on it. Well, thanks for watching this video, everybody. I am super excited because I got two things done today. And I don't know what's wrong with me, but I just love productivity, you know? Love it. So this bike is starting to come together. It's super exciting. And next time, we got a fender. A fender to work on. Yeah. This guy. It's a little rough. This is an old fender off of like a Chaparral motorcycle. Anybody ever heard of Chaparral motorcycles? It's twisted up, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close to what we want and we're gonna make it into what we want, transform it. Look forward to that, see you next time. Thanks for watching, keep on wrenching everybody. Hello.